have an automatic gun because, like my part, like my Kennedy said, he said that there's some people that are mentally stable for those type of things, and they, they usually end up going in a rampage and killing others, but that's because of their mental state. But also we have to take in consideration that some people have those weapons, but others get them from them and they use them. So that's why I'm trying to say that we should ban, well, like restrict them because even though that person might have passed that test, another person might take them from them and they are going to use them. Okay, um, and would you like to make any last opinion towards anything that Eric said? No, okay, and uh, Eric, you can have the final word on the same matter. I think if it came down to that, then yes, as long as the proper procedures, again. Uh, I think as far as my opponent said, I'm not against what he's saying. I think the guns should be banned. But because of our current political structure, everything has to be taken in steps. We can't make one big uh, giant leap. I think every, everything should be taken in steps. Okay. Um, any questions to either of the candidates? Gentlemen, thank you. I applaud you. Okay, and um, of course, if you must, if you must take off. Take off if you so have time. Please, something you want to tell me. Okay, so we have two more. Um, I feel like president. 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 So what, what would we like to do first? Would we like to do the secretary spew, or would we like to do the president? What works better, gentlemen? It's all good. I can stay here. And eat. You guys are in a rush. Good. I'll save it for last. So, um, a candidate for secretary, can you please stand up? Please enter the enter the arena. <laughs> Prepare to battle. Okay, sir, you are running for Secretary of the Others. Please state your name and a little bit about yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Alexis Sandoval, and I am one person that dislikes uh, preconceived notions and taking uh, and accepting ideas without questioning them. And to this point, that's actually how I became a vegan. Uh, I spent all my life feeling uh, sympathy for the, all these animals, but then at the same time, these corporations have set up uh, this image, this false image about how animals are treated right in those factory farms, and that's why you've accepted it. But one day I woke up and I said, no, I'm not gonna accept these preconceived, these preconceived notions. I'm gonna question them, and that's how I became a vegan. That's, that's part of myself. Okay, uh, why do you think you'd be a valuable asset of becoming the other secretary? I mean, I'm very open-minded. I like to question things, which is part of the other. I love the ideals of the others, which is re-educating society. And I'm all, and as far as part of secretary, I'm organized. I love to organize things. I mean, I, when I work with projects, with, whether it's writing a novel, I like to take the steps. I like to jot down all the ideas. Or even when, when I'm with my group, my band, uh, I like I'm the one actually who sets up the dates, and I like to work around the dates that, because I know some of the members, they, they have to take their, they have to pick up their brother from school or something, and I work around that to make sure it works. Okay, um, have you had any prior experience in leadership roles? Um, never had a major, but I've always had small roles throughout, throughout my life, it, it, like during high school. When we would we'll be assigned a group project, I'd be the one who take the lead on, this pro on the project. It's stuff like that that, that made me a leader. Okay, um, this is time to open any questions towards Alexis. Does anyone have any questions? I do have a question. Marco. Um, you know, Secretary, it's, 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 uh, it's a huge, it's, it's really important uh, for the club. You are the one that has to attend every meeting. You and the president are the ones that have to attend every meeting. Even the president can be absent and you have to be there. You are the connection between the board members and, uh, and uh, the members in town, you know? Uh, and I think that uh, being organized, it's it's crucial for this for this role. And I believe I also believe that um, you are not only a spectator, but you have to contribute with something to the club. And what would that be? And explain how how would you how would you um, take this role? The responsibility. How would you how would you take up to take care of it? Well, everything you said about this about this position, I agree. I this is the linchpin. I mean, I need to to show up every day, and I and I am. I'm always punctual. I hate being late. I hate it with passion. It's just my it's my it's just one of my things, right? And and understanding being organized is really important for this 
for the in this role, and um, I'm already planning on how to do that. Um, for every project that I take on, I would buy a separate book for for jotting down the notes, so I can set up whatever it is. And for this for this exactly, I would buy a calendar and a notebook, so I can keep track of all the things that we do here in the others, and I'll keep everyone informed. And I also understand that I need to inform people of meetings and deadlines that need to be taken. Of course, I. I can always use texting, and I can contact you guys via Facebook, which I know you guys all love. Okay. Which one? He doesn't love so much. He doesn't love so much. Love him. Okay. Hey, I'll um, make a sacrifice for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sacrifice is good. Um, I have a question. Uh, besides the discussions of like things like such as Monsanto and GMOs, what other kind of events or ideas would you like to see discussed within the club? Well, definitely, one of my things that I hate is preconceived notions. I mean, any any idea, anything that they tell us that has been that has been pre that that has been an accepted idea among society, without questioning, I would love to question it, no matter what it is, no matter how tedious, because you never know, you'll never know, you'll live your entire life without knowing the exact truth if you never question these things. And even if it's not something big like con control, it's still important, and I, it's something that you should question. Is there any examples that you would like to give about questioning anything? Well, like I, well, f well, the one that, one, the biggest example in my life was was the one for the the the, the image that factory farming has set for us. And no one questions that. People walk around, and even though they're morally uptight about animals, they never question it. It's things like that. Uh, and even if, even if it's smaller things too, like like social acceptances of of different ideals, maybe dating ranges too. Stuff like that, the people don't ex people have just uptight ideas, but they don't they don't understand why, or they don't act, they just don't everyone accepts it, so they follow on. No, I would like to question that anything from even from social ideas. Okay. Uh, any other questions for our friend Alexis? Okay, sir, you're gonna be put in the hot seat. Okay. Okay. Um, the issue of of abortion. In certain situations, a mother has to abort because her life is put in jeopardy. What are your views on abortion, and why do you think the way you think? Well, first of all, I think abortion should be legalized, and the reason why is because not having abortion also comes with a lot of repercussions. I mean, what if it's a threat to the mother, and the mother will die? Or what if she was raped? You don't want that mother's not going to want to raise that child, and that child's not going to want to. The, the the son of a rape victim, you know, and and not only that, there are also social repercussions too. Like what if what are, and economical repercussions? What if this mother isn't 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 in right now in an econo economical position to be having a child, and, and that child becomes it becomes more of like a burden to to the mother, and it contributes to crime, and then we all end up paying for it because of ideals. That we, because some people have ideals that, that abortion should be wrong based on religion. Okay, so in an instance of not having a, a woman's life in jeopardy, what of her free will? What about the idea that she had the social responsibility to not have a child or to not get pregnant? Therefore, she was just irresponsible the whole time. And she was of a family of wealth and still decided to have an abortion. And adoption was still on the table. Well, even if she did have an abortion, I mean, if she if she would not have the abortion, eventually we would all pay for it in some way. Maybe she doesn't like adoption and she does the wrong thing and sends her off to to a fire department or something. It'd be better to just play on the safe side when it comes to this kind of stuff. You consider a fetus to be a human life? Uh, no. Okay, Gerardo. In some cases, a lot of Americans would argue the fact that a fetus is a living being and it does have its rights just like any other human being that's alive today. How can you argue with somebody that's strongly against abortion that the, that the fetus inside the female is not considered a human being and it doesn't have its rights as the ones the people the ones same rights that people are born with? Well that a fetus is not fully developed and in some cases, and depending on some stages, is not even conscious. So to give it the same rights as someone who is a living conscious being is it's just asinine. Okay, asinine, I like that. 
Any other questions towards Lexus on any other matter or the matter at hand? Come on, people, we got time. <laughs> <laughs> I like his enthusiasm. Uh, it's Anyone? No, okay, uh, round of applause for our candidate. <laughs> okay, so I am currently the president of Yellers, but my dictatorship has expired. <laughs> I am no longer able to rule, but I am willing to pass down my leadership role. I feel it's important. <laughs> like a good dictator. <laughs> a loving dictator. But do not to undermine the fact that one should not have access to so much power. The idea of power has corrupted many throughout the centuries. Therefore, the power should be spread out, and other people should have the opportunity to emerge as new leaders with maybe a similar vision or even greater vision. So I would like to introduce you, our two candidates for the Yellers presidency. <laughs> Louis V and Marco V. Marco V. <laughs> so gentlemen, I actually want both of you in the hot seat. No speeches this time? I got a speech. Okay, um, shake each other's hand, do a little like little boxing thing. Alright, that works. That works. <laughs> so um I actually we'll allow Louis V to step up. Alright. For the uh, got an outline. For the record, can you please state your name? My name's Louis Bedell. I'm uh I'm a first generation citizen. I went to the Marine Corps to get my citizenship. I actually got in Afghanistan. My dad was a baker from Peru. My mom was a school teacher. I came here on a student visa. And I think that when their visa expired, they decided to stay in the country. And my dad got a lawyer to, uh, to work on our, uh, on our citizenship. And I ended up having to do it on my own. So that's probably a little back, that's just a little bit of my background. Now, um, what I, I prepared some for the uh, the Yellers organization. Um, I come humbly before you to present my deals, goals, and future aspirations for the Yellers organization. All issues under my term as president will be discussed and voted on priority. Um, no persons will be left unheard. Opinions will be voiced and taken seriously. Issues of a highly serious nature will be talked about with openness and without fear of judgment. As your president, I will personally review each topic through my own research compelling and assessment and uh, that will be fair and unbiased. Kind of like Fox News. <laughs> um, the other members will have an, an open door to privately speak to me about issues that they are unsure of, and also don't be afraid to voice your opinion. So in conclusion, the club is meant to be fun. I would expect a debate, but at the end of the day, we're all individuals with our own opinions and ideals. So as your president, I would designate social gatherings to get to know each other better and find common ground within each other. With that said, <coughs> Please take into consideration the future of the Yellers Club for the next generation of students. We can either become a movement of well-informed students that can make a difference or lose our, or lose our voice within the crowd. We are, we are Yellers, both literally and politically. Thank you. That was beautiful. Before we let you off the hook, are there any prior leadership roles that you've had in the past or currently? Yeah. Um, I was a Marine based out of uh, uh, Camp Pendleton, went to Iraq, Afghanistan. I was in charge of uh, men, which is uh, managerial, um, when we would go out on convoys, make sure everything was in order, like ammo, um, pretty much the, the, that everyone was up on time. We'd do uh, brass checks, make sure that we were all in condition one before we go out the wire. Um, I brought my DD-214 and my ribbons, and also a certificate from the, uh, if you please pass that around, from the uh, Sergeant Major and Commanding Officer of 2-5, um, the most decorated Marine Corps unit. Um, and uh, for the most part, I've shown leadership skills. I've been challenged a lot. Um, I would have to say the most challenging thing I've ever been through was when I was in Iraq. Um, I was on guard at a secret Navy SEAL base uh, guarding the perimeter. and there's something called rules of engagement and escalation of force. And sometimes taking matters into your own hands can also screw you over as a, uh, as a combatant, as, a, as someone who you know, fires back. 
So I had to make calls and I've had to do things that I wasn't comfortable with, but uh, following orders is a part of being a leader as well. So um, I guess, yeah, like I was saying, the most challenging thing was just following orders for things that I wasn't comfortable with. And it taught me a lot about myself and a lot about what I'm willing to do. So I'm, I learned that I also have a big heart. I learned that I'm not one of these, you know, the hell they say jarheads. You know, I'm educated. I'm, 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 I don't want to say I'm emotional, but like I'm compassionate and to other people's needs. And I can I take a lot of things into consideration besides just you're wrong and I'm right. You know, I also think about other people's situations as well. Okay, um, tell us why you want to become president of the others. What ideas do you want to bring to the table besides your whole, your beginning speech? What other um, discussions would you like to have? And why would you become president or want to? Well, I feel that there's a lot of things going on in our country right now that a lot of people are oblivious to. I mean, we talk about the debt ceiling, we talk about the budget, and because we're not getting affected directly, we feel as if it's not going to happen to nothing's going to happen to us. When the truth is, is that we're all getting affected by it. So awareness is probably one of the best ways. Of